What's going on? Garrett Blevins here. I want to explain to you about Mad Cow 5x5. So this is a program, not a lot of people run it, not as many as Stronglist 5x5, but it is the official follow-up to Stronglist 5x5. Now, if you remember from my previous video, if you haven't watched that, make sure you do on Stronglist. When you plateau on Stronglist, you're supposed to drop down your volume from 5x5 to 3x3, and then 1x3 with two back offs of three. And so you're going to get used to a lower amount of volume, which is perfect to transition to Mad Cows, which although it's called a 5x5, is actually a lot less volume than you would think. So let me explain first the three workouts. You've got workout A, B, and C. Workout A has squat, bench, and barbell rows, all for five sets of five, which I'll explain to you. Those are ramp up sets of five. Workout B has light squats for a four by five, and then either incline bench or overhead press for a four by five and deadlift for a four by five. Those are also ramp up four sets of five. Finally, workout C, which is the most complex. It's got four sets of five, one set of three, and one set of eight. And that's again with squat, bench, and barbell row. The lifts that you use for the triples there is gonna be what you use the next time you use workout A. I'll explain that here in a moment. So what are the actual progressions of the weight? Well, let's say when you were coming in, you were targeting 300 pounds for your best set of five, and that's what you were using for workout A's top set. You're gonna work, you're gonna do your warmups like 45, the bar, you know, 135, and then you would start using your ramp up sets. So 150, 190, 225, 265, 300. That's your five by five. So a lot of those are warm ups that are very easy to do. It's really just one top set of five, and that's all you're working up to. Percentage wise, this comes out to 43%, 54%, 64%, 75%, 86%. And you may wonder, like, why those? Why would I use those? Well, if you know about one rep maxes or estimated one rep maxes, you'll know that a five rep max is approximately 86.3% of your one rep max. And each of these drops where you're taking your five sets, you know, set one, two, three, and four, they are each 12.5% of that 86.3 less than each other which if you just scale that out to on a 100% scale is about 10.7% per drop. So that's what a five by five looks like. And that's what you do for squat, bench, and barbell rows on workout A. Now workout B, you have a ramp up of four sets of five with squat, but it's light. And what you're gonna do there is you're gonna use the bottom three lifts that you did from your A workout. So it would be your 150, your 190, and your 225. And you might say, well, that's only a three by five. That's because you do the last one twice. So you do two sets with this. Again, that's a really light day because this is a warm up set that's 25% less than your five rep max. So you have a lot less going from here to there. It's gonna be an easy day on squats. So don't freak out about the three X per week squatting. Now for the four by five on incline bench or overhead press and deadlift, you're not going to use you know, some light range. You're gonna do the same math that you would do here, except your ramp up is gonna be the last four. So let's just pretend you used 300 for deadlift over or incline press and squat, which you wouldn't, but let's pretend. You would be doing these as your ramp ups for your four by five. The warm ups you do before that are really up to you. You've already done light squatting, so you're probably gonna be pretty warmed up for your deadlift already. And you can warm up for incline press however you'd like. Since it's a lighter weight, you're probably gonna end up hitting it faster. So you might wanna use a 45 and then a 95. That's totally okay. Just warm up appropriately for where you're gonna start that four by five for workout B. Now, finally, for workout C, where you have a four by five, one by three, one by eight, you're gonna use five pounds heavier on everything past the warm up. So we're doing 150 to start over there. Now we're doing 155, 195, 230, 270. And then we're dropping to triples. So you're going to do a four by five ramp into a one by three with five more pounds than you used for your five by five ramp on your top set. So once you do this, you may think, man, it's so heavy. I've just done a four by five. How am I going to do this maximal set that's even heavier? Well, that's because it's a triple. And if you're dropping two reps, leaving two reps in the tank, adding five pounds is not that big a deal. You're basically going from like an RPE nine or 10 down to an RPE, you know, seven or eight. It's gonna be a lot easier. Now that is followed up by this set of eight. No, don't like that. Where you're gonna be doing uh, a bounce back two sets and whatever you used for that, you know, second to last warm up, 
you're gonna pick set of eight to finish this out. This keeps the volume on your C workout high because of that extra set of eight when you drop those two reps, but you're still getting in a lot of quality work. Now, you're gonna do that for squat, bench, and barbell row, and you're gonna add five pounds, and then you're gonna recycle, except now you're using the heavier weight. For deadlift, you should be increasing the weight that you use on deadlift by five pounds every week on the B workout, and for the squat and the, or for the overhead press or the incline press, you might wanna use fractional plates because that's gonna be using smaller muscles. You're gonna plateau out on that faster. Now, here's the key to avoid plateaus on mad cows for as long as possible. And that's to start with a lower percentage than your true five rep max. I know I've been saying 300, 300, 300. Well, if that's what you were using for your five by five in strong lifts, it's not really your five rep max if you can do five sets in a row with it. So that would probably be something like five to 8% less than your true five rep max if you were just doing ramp ups and doing one heavy set of five like you're doing in mad cows. However, I would still advise you to back off a little bit somewhere where it's taken you about four or five weeks to hit your previous best set of five. So in this situation, if we started mad cows, if we had plateaued out at 300, if we start with 8% less, we'd be using about 275, and that would be our first week. And as we add five pounds each week, it would take us six weeks to get back up and match what we had done before. But then hopefully, because we've been spending all that time working with that volume, working on our technique, not frying our CNS or destroying ourselves because we're going so heavy every week, just trying to eke out five more pounds, but we're really taking a step back, that hopefully should allow for a progression forward. Many people can run Mad Cow five by five for like 20 weeks and make consistent progress, but that's because they're having a few weeks that ramp up into it, and then they're hitting PRs you know, for maybe 12 or 10 of those weeks that follow. Now, you can run mad cows a couple of times, but once you've gotten to this level of strength where you plateau multiple times on mad cow, you're probably gonna be ready for a more extensive and complex periodization style. You're gonna need something that doesn't have you adding weight to the lifts every single week like this does on the B workout or adding it you know, from the C to the A, and yeah, you've got two exposures there, but two exposures to a lift before adding weight is not that many, trust me. Yo, yeah, why should we trust this guy? Because I'm trusting, trust me, I'm trustworthy. Uh, you're gonna need something that maybe takes up to even maybe four weeks before you add any weight to uh, the bar. So something more like 531 might be a good next step. Moving into just straight up like linear periodization where you have blocks that are ordered sequentially, um, that has a more complex integration of overload and exercise variations, that's gonna be where you're gonna wanna progress after you start stalling out on these early intermediate programs. In any case, I hope that was helpful in understanding Mad Cows 5x5. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you've gotten to this point, make sure to like and subscribe, and I hope wherever you're at, you're doing well. Blessings.